Hi everyone, it's Cindy. Welcome back to Studio Lou. So I am here today with my Thrifty Thursday Thrifty Connects uh, post with my thrift haul. Um, so I have a bigger thrift haul today. It's been a couple of weeks and I picked up um, a few things like little bits here and there. So it's all kind of been uh, conglomerating here in my, my little space where I throw my thrift hauls when I get home. So first thing I got is this cute little recipe box and it's got a little recipe rest. Um, it's just this adorable little, you know, um, good for keeping things in. I, I always use like these little boxes to keep bits and bobs in they're very helpful for me um so yeah i have this now it's going in the studio somewhere for some bits and bobs and then i got this set um of little books on survival in the wilderness so it's in this plastic thing so we've got medical aid in the wilderness, poisonous plants in the wilderness, edible plants in the wilderness, edible plants in the wilderness, volume two, uh, survival in the wilderness, and also like it's like a, a fold out. And it also has some porcupine quills in it. There's one right there. You can see it there. Um, there's a couple more right there. So yeah, they're, the books themselves are just kind of these little like informational booklets. They do have some pictures in them, but I thought it was a pretty cool little kit. And it's for from Manning, Oregon. So for me, it doesn't apply to my wilderness here. Um, it's a totally different uh, zone. So it will go into journal related efforts, I think. And then I did it again, you guys. I bought another box of things. This is terrible. This is a thousand French linen doilies. I couldn't help myself. Look at how nice they are. They're just these little paper doilies. They're really pretty. And there is a thousand of them. So we don't need any paper doilies anymore. We've, we, we're set for life. <laughs> these things find me. Although today I did say no to a box of a thousand window envelopes. You don't have to be that proud of me. <laughs> then I found this little um, bag of, those are some cotton ties. I think these are little boxes. I just like the patterns on them. Um, and I'll probably cut them up and use them as ephemera. But they've got a, little labels here. Yeah, they're like little takeout boxes. But I will use them for something that's different, more paper related. Like I'll probably cut these bits out. I mean, even something like this can be used, right? All of these things can be used for interesting kind of ephemera. So that is what I will do with those. I'm gonna plot these in my little ephemera bits over here. And this will go into um, my ephemera bin. And then let's switch up to a book. So I got Richard, Richard Scary's Mother Goose. Um, there, I have to see her eye at least. These stickers drive me crazy. Anyways, this is a beautiful uh, book. I love Richard Scary, And this one is actually one that I really, really love. It's got particularly great pictures in it. Um, they're all good, but this one's nice because it's got some bigger pictures and some smaller ones. And I love this Humpty Dumpty. <laughs> How can you not love Richard Scarry? Richard Scarry is so wonderful. We all need more Richard Scarry in our lives, I think. And then I found this puzzle. This is a Mary Aline Bastion puzzle. And I'm hoping I can get this off. We just need to be a little patient. It's coming. Slowly but surely. I'm always too lazy to heat up the labels to remove them. So this is the Garden Warblers. It is a Springbok jigsaw puzzle of 500 pieces. Um, and yeah, Mary Line Bastion is so lovely. When I was two years old, my mother would put me in her garden. I would bring her tiny centipedes so she could give them bread. I loved nature as a little child and started to draw when I could hold a pencil, sketching pine cones, leaves, and little flowers. They were little things, but they are treasures for me. When I was 10, I knew for sure that I'd like to be a nature artist. I thought I'd have to show people how important nature is for us. This picture is a family of garden warblers, mother feeding her young, which I observed in my own backyard. 
on an old fence. The flowers are bramble, foxglove, and a garden plant with pink flowers. Spirea salifolia, Marialine Bastion. Um, so yeah, I really like her. So cute. This is from 1994, and I think there's a couple of things. So if you've been following me for a while, you'll know um, I'm working. I, I've, am I, yeah, I've already released them. I'm trying to remember if they're in progress or if I've already finished them. But no, I finished them, um, and I have more that I'll be making where I used puzzles on the cover of a book. I did... Um, rainbow bright books that were like that that had um, vintage puzzles on the front and I will have some more coming I think Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles I have this big box this is a long-term ongoing project for me these retro journals that I sometimes talk about and I need to pull them out again and start working on them but not today so there's the puzzle option which I'll probably use the puzzle for things and then also the cover here I'm going to use because um, it's amazing And on this day, I did find one old book. Um, thankfully, that will come off. The Seats of the Mighty by Gilbert Parker. It's got some nice writing in it from 1911 here. The book itself is... Um, oh, when is it from? Let's see. Uh, 1902 uh, entered according to the Act of the Parliament of Canada in the year 1902 by Gilbert Park, London, England, in the office of the Minister of Agriculture. So yeah, 1902. Don't see a lot of stuff inside of it, um, but I like the cover quite a lot. I would probably cover this up and just keep the beautiful image of the plants. Okay, so this, <laughs> yes, these were $5.75. Would I normally pay that? No, not at all. However, this is from um, probably like some kind of an artist or, or crafter who for some reason just had an utter ton of brads. And this is the pink and red collection according to the outside, but that's not what we have inside. What we have inside are all of these little pots that have different kind of brads. So this one has cats. There's some green, there's some gold, there's some jeweled ones, um, stars, all sorts of brads. These are like super fancy beaded brads. Um, brads, brads, brads. So I'm going to organize these in my container where I keep all my metal. But the reason that I was like, okay, I'll let myself get these, even though it's a little, I think, high price. This is magnetized too, so I could use these if I wanted to. Um, this one has dogs, dog brads. Um, they're, they're such crappy containers of these things. I really don't like them. I'll be getting rid of these little containers little metal triangles but anyway the reason that i got them is because i could use these containers these plastic containers i actually need some more plastic containers to hold on to things so yeah this one was three dollars because it wasn't in a plastic container but it's just a whack of brads and so the reason i was like yeah okay i'll pay 575 for these is because you know, I would pay that for these nice, like, containers anyways, and they're, like, um, Rubbermaid, so, yeah. I've recently been trying to influence my husband, who has his mother's genetics of wanting to, um, oh, a leaf. It's nice, a dried leaf. That's a pretty one. He has his mother's genetics of wanting to keep all the containers from, like, you know, Chinese restaurants and things like that. And I have no desire for all of those containers. You can't put them, you know, plastic can't go in the microwave. We don't use them for things like at all. Um, and they just are being crammed in my kitchen cupboard, like my cubbies. So I'm hoping that with these, like we'll have a couple more containers and he'll feel satiated. Um, so yeah, I have to empty this out into its respective 
place that I need to put it away. And then he'll have two more containers and then I'm just gonna sneakily swoop in, grab all those takeout containers, recycle them or possibly donate them. And um, then he'll forget all about it, right? That's the hope. Okay, then some bits and bobs um, of sewing related things. So some seam binding, navy, this very nice kind of cerulean blue and a burgundy lace. And then some um, thread. I'm always, always grabbing um, Gutterman thread and black and gray in general. I go through so much black thread and I'm just like, why? These I probably didn't need, but I like the colors a lot. So I just grabbed them because they were like, this was blue tag day. So they were half these price. I mean, I'm not too concerned about the price of those. So next we have this stuff. Um, so this was a different day. And this is a different store than I've ever been to before. Um, there was an auction going on and I had uh, an event I had to take my daughter to for her beavers. So while she was at her event, we had to keep ourselves busy. So we found this other thrift store that I've never been to. It seems a little more like curated. Um, they were having an auction, like it was a reseller's kind of haven. But I did find some things there that were reasonably priced. I think things that don't appeal to resellers really are cheaper. Like because it's it's sort of it's for your clothes goblins you know your your people who go in there for clothes like we have so many resellers of clothes these days that like the stuff that's not clothes at that store doesn't get much love so i was happy to find these for 50 cents a married with children comic it's illustrated um a ren and stimpy show comic two of them actually so those were fun they may go into my retro journals i'm not sure they may they may become their own projects to be honest then i found this book um here comes the bride beatrice menini anna laura cantone so it looks like it's a book about a wedding but it's a kid's book and i don't know it's it's really funny okay beatrice Massini illustrated by Anna Laura Cantone. I love the, you know, the illustrations remind me. Um, have you ever seen, probably if you're Canadian, you know what I mean? Um, NFB released the National Film Board of Canada. I should, I should tell everyone what that is. They released a couple of really great skits and I forget the name of the illustrator like cartoonist one is called the cat came back the other is called the big snit and the big snit is my favorite i should actually link down below the big snit so that you guys can all see it i'm just going to write that down so i remember to do it because i don't want to live in a world where you have not seen the big snit it is the best short ever i well one of them I'm, I'm a huge fan of shorts that are released by like the 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 nfb it's just a thing so it also has some kind of collagey you know junk journaly aspects to it so it's like they're sewing this wedding dress i haven't read this story but i'm going to read it with my daughter it looks really funny and really great and so we shall see what happens with this book um i just i think it looks really fun so yeah, I don't know if it has a little, um, as delicious as the most frou-frou wedding cake, Here Comes the Bride, is a hilarious story about love found, love lost, and love found again. Philomena is known far and wide for the lovely wedding gowns she sews. She puts her heart into every delicate stitch, her every elaborate bit of lace, and every silky bow. But the dresses are always for the other lucky brides and never for her. That is until the day comes when the painfully shy Rusty gathers all his courage and proposes to Philomena. Finally, it's her chance to walk down the aisle and she intends to do it in style. The whole town is a buzz. What will Philomena wear to her own wedding? Philomena's dress is a surprise, all right. But is it the kind of surprise she intends <laughs> so sounds like a cute story um then i found a book that i've gotten from the library in the past and read with my daughter and very surprised to see it at a thrift store i mean it's probably i guess it's a library throwaway the blue spruce um awards official 
selection. Yeah, it's a great book, Butterfly Park by Ellie McKay. Um, and it's been discarded from this library. It has gorgeous images. I mean, beautiful illustration. It's a lovely little story too. Um, I really love the little girl character and just the style of, I'll, I'll get a close up of her here in a moment, but like just the style of, there she is, you know, I don't know how this was illustrated, but I quite like it and it has a really sweet story to it. And I really like the cover. I don't know. We'll have to figure out what to do with that. Then, um, this book, Children of the Earth, Freddie Langler, Langler from Caboteur Products. This gold kind of inside. Um, it's from 1996. It's from the Netherlands. And it's just a lovely little, um, storybook. Probably read this with the kiddos. I also think it might come in nice for the journals that I'm currently working on. Definitely these pages. They're really nice. So cute. Okay. And then another book that I'll probably just give this one to my daughter. I don't even think I showed her that, like, I got it because she loves this book. We've gotten it from the library. The Day the Crayons Came Home. So it's just this cute book. Um, you know, lots of crayon drawings. Yeah, so sweet. It's got a glow in the dark page. This has like texture. It feels almost like if you were to draw with um, oil pastel on a chalkboard, it's got that kind of texture to it. So we'll set that in the other pile. <laughs> okay, then what do we have in here? I didn't even notice this. Beatrice Tanaka Green Tails. Oh, that's a nice uh, cover. I didn't get the book. I want the book now. <laughs> I wonder if the book has such a beautiful um, image in it. Wow, that's gorgeous, right? Ah, oh, okay. So this is There's a Nightmare in My Closet by Mercer Mayer. Um, you know, of that little, that cute little monster um, thing. So the, the book cover is the same, but matte, you know, like it doesn't have the cover on it. Um, has this nice discarded uh, library thing inside. I'm a huge Mercer Mayer fan. I love his style. This is a really cute book. I think it would be a lovely storybook journal. And it's also set up very nicely to do that because all the words are separate from the pictures. So you can play with that a little more. Um, and then I found another Mercer Mayer book, The Sleeping Beauty. It's a cute little book plate. This one is 1990 or 84, sorry. And I just like the illustration style. It's so pretty. I probably will just use it for like the images inside. I don't think I'll be doing a, a storybook journal with it. It's a little big. The book itself is, oh wow, I have to show this to you. Look, I'm gonna have to do something with this book cover because it's pretty. Look at that, it's like a rose gold on the front, kind of Art Nouveau feeling. Yeah, we'll play with that in some way. Okay. Oh, and then I found this book, it just looks kind of cool for reading, Revelations, Diaries of Women. Um, so it's got excerpts from diaries, like actual diaries of a whole bunch of women here. Marjorie Fleming, Louisa May Alcott, and Frank Marie Bashkritsev, Nelly Plushkina, Plushkina, um, Hannah Senesh, Sai Shonagan, George Sand, um, or is that a Jorge Sand? I'm not sure. Um, all sorts, right? All sorts of women. I don't need to read all of their names, but there's Virginia Woolf, there's um, um, Emily Carr, 
um, all sorts of cool women and their actual journal entries. So yeah, I used to love when I was growing up the the books um, Adrian Mole. You know, they were diary entry books. I've always been really attracted to those kind of books that are written like a diary. Then I got this big ream of lace. Uh, this is from my recycling center, so it cost almost nothing. Some of these things that I'm pulling now are recycling center. This is also recycling center. Um, these little tiny ghosts, they're be cute in like a Halloween shaker card, right? These little bitty boos, they're so cute. Let's see if I can separate just one so you can see it. There we go. Yeah, they're like little sequins, but they're little ghosties, confetti. Okay, that bag is empty. Okay, give me one second. I got to pull the other stuff over here. Thrifty Thursdays are always like my slightly less professional, unedited, um, not going to pause while I walk around video. <laughs> Sorry for that. It's okay though. Yeah, this. Okay, let me find it. This. Okay, so I haven't tested this out yet, but I, f I found this thing. It's called a Turrican stapler. Let's get rid of this gnarly, ugh, gnarly plastic. It's these things. See this? So they're metal. The loop clip. Um, I gotta figure out how to use it. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna like spend a little time playing with that today because I was thinking of putting these on the top of my um what are they called all of my um stencils so I've seen some intelligent well I've, I've seen some videos recently about people trying to organize their stencils there's been two or three videos on that topic and um one way that I thought about are those plastic clothing hangers like you can get they've got like a sticky um and then like they're like you know this like something that you would see um it, not necessarily clothing but product hangers right like you know those metal poles you push it all onto a metal pole well i have tons of racking like that from my my decade of you know doing yarn shows and needing to have pegs for my yarns so i'm thinking of possibly just putting up a little bit of um, that racking maybe one piece of it somewhere in my studio here and I'll hang my stencils on there and it will be nice and neat but these would be really nice because they're durable so plastic would also work I just saw this for a dollar and went oh some new thing this okay so we did not pay this giant tiger 4.99 i didn't even see that that's not what we paid i gotta get that off though um this was from the thrift store so it was 50 cents it's a children's book i've actually made a whole um journal out of this book already called dear millie and it is um illustrated by maurice sendak which is what makes me love it it's also a really cool story and it's a lesser known maurice sendak it was a lost text from willem grimm so not a lot of people knew about it for a long time um it's been you know translated by ralph Mannheim. it's a lovely story and here um is the dear millie the story and it talks basically it's like this little girl she has to <clears throat> leave her mother there's like some reason that essentially like it's war i think you know and, and there's fire so the mother has to send her daughter off you know into the into the woods and you know it's one of those kind of grim fairy tales so she finds this old man and he cares for her um but then he sort of is possessive of her as well like he doesn't end up trying to get her back to her mom and then um eventually you know she finds her mom again or it's i can't even remember the whole story but basically it's on September 1980, 28th, 1983, the discovery of a previously unknown tale by Wilhelm Grimm was reported on the front page of the New York Times. After more than 150 years, Hansel and Gretel, Snow White, Rumpelstiltskin, and Cinderella will be joined by another Grimm fairy tale character. Published five years later, magnificently illustrated by Maurice Sendak, the first edition of the story became an international bestseller. So the tale of Dear Millie... Um, 
was preserved in a letter Wilhelm Grimm wrote to a little girl in 1816, a letter that remained in her family's possession for over a century and a half. It tells of a mother who sends her daughter into the forest to save the girl from a terrible war. The child comes upon the hunt of an old man, hut of an old man who gives her shelter, and she repays his kindness by serving him faithfully for what she thinks are three days. Actually, 30 years have passed, but Millie remained safe, and with the old man's blessing, there was still time for a tender reunion with her mother. As for the pictures that interpret Dear Millie, they were a milestone in Maurice Sendak's career, the work of a master's, a master at the height of his powers. And is that not true? Aren't those amazing illustrations? So yeah, I've done a journal on this book already. If you want to just search Dear Millie here on my channel and you will find it. Um, I no longer have it. It went to a lovely home. Um, then I found this book. This is really cool. I got this today at our uh, animal shelter thrift store. So the open timber roofs of the Middle Ages. Uh, illustrated by perspective and working drawings of some of the best varieties of church roofs in England. And this book is not going to last long here. I'm going to use the heck out of it. So it's got all these illustrations, right? These plates, and they are blank on the back, which is amazing for books, right? I don't have to stress about what will I put on the back. Look how lovely those are. They're just beautiful illustrations. And then, you know, the, the information is even written nicely about the plate um, on the pages that, that do have something there. So, yeah, it's just a cool book. Sometimes it's the least, you know, you don't expect to find a book like that, but you do. Then, oh, those are some overalls for my daughter. <laughs> then I found this little Baby Tugs Care Bear because... For those of you who don't know, I'm also a collector of vintage toys, and this is a little Care Bear, and um, we're going to give him a little clean up and then put him in my, my vintage toys. He's a little 80s baby. Um, then I found At Home in the Garden, The Musings of a Victorian Gardener, edited by Pat Ross. So this is one of those little kind of, you know little table kind of books little gift books and it's just got a lot of cute little pictures in it <laughs> look at this cucumber so just a lot of victorian vintage uh stuff about gardening and i found actually more than one i found three different little unicorn books so some unicorn person was giving up their book so this is unicorn a W. H. Allen gift book. Um, oops, we have a bead here. I'll just let that fall. Little brown book. So cute. And then inside, it's like it has little um, quotes and then just pictures on each page. I never look at the tiny books, and today I did, and it, it was a good thing. This is a postcard book called Unicorn by Michael Green, and it's just full of beautiful unicorn postcards. Just different postcards. Then we have the Unicorn Journal 2, an illustrated book with space for notes by Tim Hildebrandt. So this is actually a unicorn journal. So I have already made a couple of unicorn journals. Um, you can find them by searching unicorn here on my channel. They were design team projects for the amazing release, The Crafton, and her beautiful unicorn kit. Like I, this has me excited because I might get to use it again and make more unicorn journals because I do have a couple more unicorn books. And it was also a day for field guides. So um, stars, this is a golden guide. I always love these little guides. So this has got some celestial fun stuff in it. This one I've had before and I've used a lot of it. The wildflowers of North America. It has these beautiful plates. And then a field guide to edible wild plants. Um, this one is a newer, I think, one. It is more photographic uh, in nature. Um, has some photographs, I believe. Yeah, so it's it's more like these little photos and then the rest of it is the black and white images. But those are really fun to use too and they're also great to watercolor if you've never watercolored um, these kind of illustrations then I recommend it. In the front it's also got this. So yeah, all fun field guides. 
And then another kind of book I never buy either when I looked through the, the little books, A Thousand Paths to Tranquility by David Baird. But you know, it's full of these great word snippets. Begin by knowing that you have already arrived. Whatever people try to tell you, don't be fooled by them. Don't accept other people's delusions. <laughs> so, you know, some are a little okay, but others are great. Like forgetting is a normal process of self-protection. You know, so there's lots of just different uh, nice things little things in here. Some are funny, some are a little philosophical, some are maybe a little racy, but you know, they're just fun. Good little word snippets. Then the last of the bags, finally. I told you this was a bigger thrift, okay? So you were warned. <laughs> then I found a box with a little a library kind of label on the front. Um, I'm in the process of trying to organize all the papers that I've put on top of my paper cabinet because my ephemera has gotten a little messy and I want to clean it up. I don't think it'll take too long. I just need to, I just need to sort it again. <laughs> then I found this, um, again, another more or less like a vintage toy situation rather than journaling related but I will show it to you because I think some of you probably enjoy it so I'm not a huge Disney fan I'm, I'm not a Disney collector but this is a vintage Lady and the Tramp and I just thought it was so cute so this is from Disneyland Walt Disney World um Burbank, California. I'm trying to find the date. I don't see one on the tag, but it's really cute. I'm guessing probably 70s by the look of it because um, it doesn't have that more like Disneyized look. It was back when they were making things like with this kind of hair too, like this. Um, and also this look of more just a, an animal than specifically the cartoon version of the animal. And then a few more books because this is a dollar this is the dollar book place that I that I always pick things up from so this is Glenn Lotes A Brush With Life now this is a huge book and I've had it before and, and I'm really like okay Cindy we need to use this up ASAP so I think I'm going to be using a good amount of this right away we're going to cut it down we're going to go right through it and get it out of my studio because it needs that's what needs to happen it can't stay here <laughs> You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. Um, but it has really nice images, so we're going to break that down. And this book is so cool. The Painted House. Over 100 original designs for mural and uh, trompe ole decoration. Um, so Graham Rust. Okay, look at the pictures. A little tiny mouse and snail. So yeah it's all about like mural kind of um you know decorating and it's just got so much good stuff in it like i was in shock i did not expect this to be so cool but it really is look at that purple cabbage all these little veggies dancing around it the pumpkin and the sage yeah, this book's unreal. It's just so cool. Oh, amazing. Then, another book, of course. Creating Textures in Watercolor. How to Paint 83 Textures from Glass to Fur. Um, and it's just got a lot of cool artsy pages. It would, it would be really good for like an art journal kind of inspired you know, like I made those um, art studio journals, moss, you know, it just tells you how to like paint all these different things, weathered wood, grass, but yeah, I really like it. Also great for nature journals. Um, and this, The Quilts of Dufferin County, Women's Art, Women's Stories. I want to read this. It looks so good. So it's about all the quilts. Um, so there's a bunch of quilts in here. It's just all quilts. And it tells you who made it, when, what's the story, what's it about. Um, and also, you know, it talks a little bit about quilting history. Um, yeah, just very cool. So Victorian exuberance. I have so many of these quilts, these patchy, crazy quilts. 
log cabins, talking about a passion for red, red work embroidery. Um, it's got some good old photos in here too of women quilting. And uh, yeah, it's a cool book, Dufferin County. And then this book, The Ten Birds Meet a Monster by Sybil Young. And it's all these lovely birds. Okay, and then we're getting to the bottom. So this book, Little Peter Cottontail, these little bunny um, book, super cute. Sorry guys, I just got interrupted because um, everyone in the world needs to talk to me all the time. They're trying to interrupt my five hour long thrift haul video. Okay. So anyway, <laughs> did I, did I show you Peter Cottontail? I probably just said, this is a book quick. <laughs> so this is a beautiful book. It is 1976 and it's a lovely little book. I've had it before and I just picked it up again because I just love it. I think I've used the whole, the other one. Stick Stones. Um, Carlos Antonio Lorena Aguare, Aguare, I'm not sure. I think that sounds Italian. Hmm. I don't know. No, Peruvian. Okay, well, it's an adoption of Peruvian. Um, yeah, so it's Peruvian. Okay, so look at these pictures. It's all black and white. But look, it's so magical. And I was thinking that frog is so cool that some of these pictures would be really great for the current journal I'm working on. It's a little bit about wizardry and stuff. So like definitely this image and like, yeah, I thought it was really neat. So that book and then I just have a couple more things. Um, yeah, okay. So just a bit of paint. So um, these are just paint, paint tubes and they're colors that I don't really have like some nice, I could use more yellows and greens. So I just grabbed those, they were a quarter each. Um, so that is my gigantic thrift haul. Oh my gosh, I have to put all this away. Thank you for joining me. Um, I will uh, talk to you soon. Oh, and here on the loop clip, this is what I'm saying. See, it has the, see, you can hang on a peg that's what I'm thinking. What do you think about that for storing stencils easily, right? I'm, I'm probably going to try it out. Um, anyways, that's it for me for now. I will talk to you soon after we clean up this mess. And I hope until next time that the thrifting fairies are with you. Bye for now.